Hi, and welcome to Clinician Spotlight. My name is Tony Maritato, and with me today is Jim Ferrara. So Jim is an occupational therapist who has a mobile occupational therapy business down in South Florida. He's serving residents in the community between Sarasota, Florida, which of course is my hometown, and Punta Gorda, Florida. So in a minute, Jim's going to come back on here with us, and we're going to learn a little bit about Jim's business, what mobile occupational therapy is, and anything he can tell us about his business. So Jim, first, I always like to hear, how did you get interested in occupational therapy in the first place? Why did you go down that road? Well, occupational therapy, I got into occupational therapy because I was an athletic trainer and a massage therapist already wow. living in Illinois. And I thought I wanted to do hand therapy and I did want to do hand therapy. So I went to OT school to become a hand therapist. Okay. So I did hand therapy for basically three years when I moved, when I graduated OT school there in Louisville, Kentucky, and took a job at the hand clinic there in Bardstown, Kentucky. And realized I didn't love it after all. <laughs> yeah. Didn't love hand therapy. And my wife got homesick and she wanted to move back to Cincinnati. So that's where she is from. So we moved to Cincinnati and I got worked in the nursing homes for like a year and a half. Then I fell in love with home health oh, and I've been in wow. home health for basically 13 years. Then I switched over to my own company after 13 years of doing home health. Now your company name is Functional Transformation Mobile Rehab. Um, I talk to patients all the time who get confused on the difference between outpatient therapy delivered in the home as a Part B Medicare provider versus Part A Medicare home health therapy. So could you just tell us a little bit about how you differentiate what it is that you do compared to a traditional home health provider? Well, what we do is pretty much so nowadays they're doing away with us lymphedema therapist and home health because it's too expensive. We take up too many visits. And so they're pretty much doing away with it all the way down here. I don't know too many that are still doing home health. So they're just happy to get a lymphedema therapist, let alone someone. They don't really care if it's home health or not. They just want a lymphedema therapist down here. And so... As let me ask you this. So as a lymphedema therapist, because this is one of the challenges that we face all the time, we treat a lot of patients who have had surgery, they're dealing with lymphedema issues that might have been pre existing before surgery or associated with the surgery. Can you tell individuals who have not been prescribed any kind of lymphedema treatment, what exactly it is that you do, how you help their condition, whatever that may be as an occupational therapist who's also a lymphedema specialist? Well, depending on what I do is I evaluate them and see what it is. If they've got like from a, from a surgery, perfect example is a total knee or total shoulder. And you get that person who the swelling is not going to go down on. A simple lymph MLD treatment can open up the lymph nodes and get the lymph fluid fluid moving and out of their body so much quicker. I've seen a total shoulder where this lady's shoulder was so swollen and one treatment's time. By the time I got done, her shoulder was half the size it was when I got there. And I had a student with me that day and her mouth like dropped, literally dropped because of the difference after just one treatment. So for like total joints, lymphedema therapy can help out so much because you know, as well as I do, the range of motion is limited by so much time by the fluid. If you can get the fluid out in two treatments from lymphedema, like an MLD treatment, their recovery time is going to improve drastically, drastically, and their pain is going to go down as a result. And I think and, one, of, one of the things that nobody discusses is the damage to the lymphatic system following the knee replacement. Mm -hmm. When patients are recovered six weeks, 12 weeks, even a year after knee replacement, but the lymphatic system is still struggling to keep up the redness, the warmth, the swelling around the knee. Um, I think that's where a lymphedema specialist really comes into understanding and evaluating what's going on. 
Now, and especially if they've had lymphedema before the surgery. I've had patients where I'm telling them, you need to go get a th lymphedema therapist before, even if I'm not available, go get someone else and get treated before you have the surgery, get the lymph system prepped for that surgery, get it flowing in other areas and get it ready. And then once you're done with the surgery, make sure you're you're doing everything you're supposed to do to get that lymph system going because you are, as a person who already has lymphedema, so much more susceptible for the lymphedema to blow up after that surgery, after that trauma for the surgery. So it's so important for someone with lymphedema already and they're having the total joint done to be on top of their game and know what to look for. You know, that's something I never even realized. 21 years as a clinician in private practice myself, and I never even considered having a lymphedema specialist come in pre-surgical to work on the health of the tissue. We always talk about exercise and mobility, mm -hmm. but that's amazing. That is such an important factor. You've got another program that you offer, the LSVT Big Program for Parkinson's. Could you mm -hmm. just tell us a little bit about what that is and how that helps individuals with Parkinson's disease? Well, the LSVT program is, I'm not sure, I'm pretty sure you know about it a little bit, but it's a very high intense program for people with Parkinson's. I don't, personally, at first, when I first did the program, was doing the program, I thought it might be too intense for my patients. I really haven't come across it being too intense for most of my patients because they now break it down so you can break it down to that person's level. And if the, you start with trying to do the four days a week, and if they can't do the four days a week, you just can't call it LSVT, but you can still do the same exercises with them for two days a week. And trust me, it makes a difference. It makes a huge difference. Even if it is only two days a week, you just can't call it the LSVT program at that time. And so is this something that you can do with the individual in the home? Oh, yeah. It's actually better in the home because the, you, with the LSVT program, you have the patient come up with four of their goals. And one, there's always going to be five goals that they come up with. One's always going to be going from sit to stand. That's a given. That's the number one goal that that's part of that program is to sit to stand. Then they come up with four goals of their own and one big goal, four small goals and one big goal. So most of those goals are going to be relating to the home and 99% of my patients, it's bed mobility, bed mobility, bed mobility with Parkinson's. It's almost a given that bed mobility is their most difficult, their biggest complaint because here in Florida, everyone's got a walk-in shower. 99% of the people have walk-in showers and most people already have their grab bars. So their bathrooms are predominantly mostly set up down here that's the luxury of living in florida but the problem is the beds down here the beds is like my number one complaint from patients is i can't get into my bed i can't do this i can't do that so the bed is my biggest hurdle down here and so it's like every eval i'm automatically telling them half bed rail get that half bed rail it's going to make all the difference in the world i go over with them show them where to get it and unless they're totally independent, but I still educate them on it because in the future, they're probably going to need it. Sure. And so I want to be respectful and mindful of your time. I know you're between patients right now. Let me ask for anybody who wants to reach out to you, get in touch with you, anybody who's in that Sarasota to Punta Gorda area, area looking for services, what's the best way for them, them to get a hold of you? Um, my phone number, it's my phone is the best way. It's 941-830-3749. I work with other physical therapists and speech therapists here that own their own business. Then I collab with another lymphedema therapist, Jarrett, that lives in Tampa. Me and him have helped each other out. I've helped him out quite a bit to get help him doing some stuff and some marketing and stuff like that. So Perfect. I've got connections down here already that he didn't have, then he's got connections I didn't have. So we've been helping each other out. And if I get a th person in his territory, his area, because he doesn't want to come down to my area and I don't want to go up to his area. So, <laughs> so I go to bring my max I'll go to, then that's as far as I go and he won't go to Bradenton. So sure. All right. So you stay right where you are. Don't get off the line. 
Everybody, if you are looking for either therapy services for yourself or you're looking for therapy services for mom and dad, you're looking for somebody who can go to the home, these mobile therapists are really kind of the main access point for anybody needing non-home health therapy services that is covered under the Medicare Part B benefit. So I will list all of the information in the description of this video down below. One more time, Jim, thank you so much for being down there. I hope you're enjoying the weather because up here in Cincinnati, it's freezing cold and about 12 degrees. So I'm sure I'll be talking to you again soon. All righty.